Nick Crompton, the man who was pushed into infamy for uttering this iconic line. England is my city. If you viewed Nick like I did, here's what you'd think. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed and must be a typical shallow influencer to agree to associate with such a bad project team and idea, and is only in it for the money. Especially when Team 10 had been known for doing this, and this. Back when Jake was at the height of his infamy. However, in doing research for this video, I came to the conclusion that Nick didn't deserve all the flack that he got. I surprisingly discovered that it wasn't his fault and things quickly span out of control. So how did he get from being a humble English lad to becoming the England is my city guy? And what's become of him now after the entirety of Team 10 has been liquidated and faded into obscurity? Let's find out. However, we first need to go back in time to determine how he ended up with the Team 10 crew to begin with. I've always thought of this guy as an idiot who had more chins than verses that made him famous but I had sorely misjudged his character. At the age of 20, Nick was part of the founding team for a marketing agency called Social Chain. The company was wildly successful, with over 100 employees across major cities. Nick was also managing and running marketing campaigns for big brands, such as 20th Century Fox, Universal, Apple, Disney, and MTV. You either have to be very lucky or very skilled to do this. While this was happening, Jake Paul had started to create Team 10, but with a different group than the one that had gone viral in 2017. But it wasn't really working out, so Jake was introduced to Nick Crompton through his agent. Before Team 10, I was working at another agency that worked like behind the scenes of this whole world. And that's a huge company now, it's doing really well, and I moved on from there, and that's when I came up with a new business idea, and ended up connecting with someone that Jake knew, and that was involved with Team 10. And from that, they connected me with Jake, we hopped on a call, and the rest is history. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. From there, the team continued to be developed, adding new team members while old ones were replaced. The vision was to create a house of influencers that lived under the same roof, developing their social media game together, and also with the idea to draw in partnerships. And so, the new and improved Team 10 was formed, the one that the internet would eventually come to know and hate. Nick had taken up the role of COO, which basically meant he was supposed to deal with slash manage just the business side of things, so it was much more to do with the behind the scenes stuff. However, that would all change on May 31st in 2017. For some unbeknownst reason, Nick would feature in the It's Everyday Bro music video, where he uttered those infamous words. Within the month, the video would rack up 70 million views, and that wasn't even the height of it. It started to hit the mainstream audiences in July, and that's when it really took off. The video was everywhere. It was on the front page of YouTube. It was being forced down people's throats on the trending page. It was being talked about in every school gathering. And even the most qualified and suitable internet commentators were weighing in on the situation. The New York Times. The internet went wild about the entire music video, but oh boy did the internet go hard on Nick. First it was the comments, calling out his mistake. Wait. <laughs> Can we just take a moment to appreciate that this person's profile picture is a zoomed up cheek shot of an Among Us character. And they're being featured in this video because of a 190k liked comment. Oh man, I love the internet. Sorry, I just had to acknowledge how ridiculous this all is. Back on topic. First, it was the comments. Then it was content creators reacting to it. Because it was so popular, it started to be picked up by mainstream media. Then bigger name content creators were weighing in as well. This was a huge thing gaining mainstream social media attention, and so YouTubers were getting a bad rap in association with it. So some were ridiculing the content as an outcry of, we ain't standing for this and we don't want to associate with Team 10 as content creators. I also remember it was quite satisfying being a part of the audience watching this, where content creators deservedly mock this cringe. It may sound here like that his flow is all off. It may, it may sound completely terrible, but really here what JP is doing is a new form of rapping. It's meant to sound like sh My friend sent me this link today. A, a picture of the iTunes charts. Number one, Despacito. Number two, It's Every Day Bro, featuring Team 10. Oh man, it's a sad day for music. It really is. It was satisfying justice seeing bad content being called out like this. My name is Nick Crompton and my girl is the A-Poppin. Yes, I can't rap and no one I forgot. 
All this combined with the fact that it was quite easy to hate on the video with questionable lyrics and as well as the fact that Nick had quite a distinctive look compared to the rest of the crew. This made him an easier target to single out. People were not holding back and were punching below their weight, or in this case, above, and everyone was dunking on him for it. He was being mocked, ridiculed, and memed hard. He had been catapulted into unforgettable meme status with just one simple phrase. That was unexpected. Unfortunately, there was a side of Nick Crompton that people weren't seeing due to all the negative press that It's Everyday Bro was getting. As it turns out, he didn't even come up with the line. No, dude, and that's why I feel so bad. <laughs> because I wrote um, Nick's part. Oh, you wrote it? Yeah. Wait, you wrote England is my city? Yeah, because you were oh, so scared. Oh my god, <laughs> Yeah, dude. I messed up, bro. I messed Holy up shit. badly. That's... But yeah, I, I read that line and just assumed it was a joke. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going along with it, I think it's funny, and uh -huh. so we record it. No one's saying anything because I think everyone just assumed it was a joke. <gasps> so then this is going through like recording, then we filmed the music video the exact same day. So then we ended up making this video in like 12 hours wow. and song, and I became a meme from it, so that's great. I mean, but also it's super impressive. Yeah. I don't know what's impressive about it. <laughs> Imagine you're Nick Crompton. You know that you're better than this and said the line ironically, thinking that it was a joke. But everyone on the internet knows you as the England is my city guy. You had signed up for the business side of things, but then you got caught in the crossfire by being featured in a music video. So you decide to act a character, someone that you weren't truly, and the internet was berating you for it non-stop. So now you are socially locked into a position that you didn't want to be in because of a joke music video. In appearing like this in such a viral video and becoming so deeply associated with the brand, it was impossible for him to go back to being unnoticed and enjoying doing what he actually wanted to do. Although the music video was controversial, it still had a whopping amount of views and a massive bunch of traction. And by judging from the like to dislike bar, for every 3 angry internet users, there was a hypothetical Team 10 fan. There were fans like these and there were theoretically 3 million of them. There was business and work to be done here. And so, presumably, Nick got to work. He started growing their social media presence, selling merch, marketing their music, and organizing sold out tours and events. I assume this was done by Nick and his own hand-picked behind the scenes team. This assumption will be explained later in the video. He was doing all this as the COO while still appearing in vlogs as a member of Team 10, while also dealing with the PR disasters Jake Paul was creating left and right. Jake, I wouldn't do that. I have one question for you. Yeah. What are those? <laughs> the tensions in the Team 10 house would continue to build. It was obvious that the foundations of the team were built on very rocky foundations, and that was the founder, Jake Paul. No, okay, so listen to what the f is going on in your head, right? <laughs> I'm a logical person, I'm pretty smart, so I know how pathetic this sounds. What are you whispering for? No, just speak. It was very obvious what the internet perceptions were of Nick, as you could tell from the comment section for this video. The trickle-on effect that the meme had was still very present, even almost after a year of the music video's release. The strained relationships that Jake was making with all the Team 10 members would continue to build until May 2018. The straw that broke the camel's back was Greg Paul. Jake Paul's dad firing almost all the behind the scene workers that Nick Crompton had brought on. Are you serious, my brother? In May 2018, Nick would announce his departure, which caused the catalyst for many other Team 10 members to follow suit. Jake Paul's father, known as Greg Paul, has completely taken over Jake Paul and Logan Paul's businesses. And they decided that they needed to fire a bunch of people to save some money. So there were office workers, assistants, cameramen, editors that were completely fired from Team 10. But here's the thing, Nick Crumpton hired these people and worked with them every day. So once like they got fired, Nick 
Frumpton himself just quit and left the company. This demonstrated how important of a figure Nick was in the Team 10 crew. That is causing Chance to leave, but not just Chance. What I'm being told is that Cade is also planning on leaving Team 10 and his brother Nathan, the cameraman. This whole thing is falling apart all around Jake's feet. The quick leaving of team members was reminiscent of the why I left BuzzFeed video trend. Jake's solution to this problem was to try hire new members to replace the old ones. Following this, there were many terrible business decisions, which were basically scams, made by Jake Paul which would lead to the death of Team 10. Without Nick, or many of the original Team 10 members that people knew, the company was driven into the ground with Jake Paul dying alone on the hill. But that doesn't matter, because now he's got a successful boxing career. I'm free. I'm free. So how's Nick Crompton been doing since then? Okay, it's time for one of our favorite games on the show called What If It Was Purple? <laughs> Up first we have... Nick Crompton. He's lost over 100 pounds and is still going. So when and how did he slim down this much? I honestly don't know, there were no traces of it whatsoever on the internet. This is where I put his transformation pics. If I had them! But it's not so vain that he'd post them himself anymore. So you know that he's doing it for personal reasons. Speaking of posting, he's gone and cleared all forms of social media. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. The most recent public appearance that he's made was on Drama Alert 3 weeks ago, where he was giving a written response in regards to a boxing match with Brzezinga but said that it wasn't going to happen. According to his LinkedIn page, he's now the vice president at Universal Music Group. It seems like he's found something he's good at and is enjoying it very much and doesn't need the validation of the internet for it. I was originally going to do a video about Team 10, but after doing my research, I diverged from that idea and found Nick Crompton as an individual to be much more interesting. My takeaway is that no matter what happens, it's never too late to change yourself in order to be better. If a man that was mocked and ridiculed by literally millions was able to hold up his head and take it in stride, we can all go out and fail miserably and it won't matter. Wait, no, that doesn't make- Anyways, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and the most important thing to remember is, don't rinse your mouth after brushing your teeth. Like, for real, I'm not kidding. I was talking to a dentist friend about this and apparently the-